All right. How you doing, everyone? I'm Ross Salzberg, welcoming you once again to Big Blue Kickoff Live here on Giants.com and the Giants app. With me, always, my colleague and my very good buddy, Paulie Dots, Paul Dottino. The number for you nice people to call is 201-939-4513. That is 201-939-4513. It's and Wednesday, Russ. It, Are you ready? I am ready. Are you ready? And I'll tell you what got me ready. Listening to the our open, uh, Parcells saying, nobody can tell you you didn't do it. Because you did it. Because you did it. And that's what the Giants got to do this week. Sunday, they got to did it. Because if they didn't did it, then you got to forget about it. I got Papi? you, my man. I got you, man. Okay. Giants, Washington, Sunday night football. Huge game. I know there are a lot of other permutations that will still help this team, even if things don't go well. But you don't want to go there. You want to take care of your own business. You want to earn your way into what you deserve. Well, you, you know, to me, my attitude is this, uh, and we certainly know the last, uh, you know, five weeks, six weeks has not been a walk in the park. But, it, you know, if you're going to make the playoffs and you're going to get in, you want to get in to do something about it. You, you don't want to get in and says, okay, we got a ticket into the dance, and then we got knocked out of the dance one, two, three. You want to feel good. And to me, like as you just mentioned, Paul, there are permutations and combinations. Even if they didn't win they could this week, they're mathematically still in the hunt. But you know what? They got to win this week to feel good. They got to win this week to stop the bleeding. They got to win this week to beat a division opponent. They got to win this week to have the tiebreaker with the commanders. They got to win this week by any means necessary, period. You know, they're 1-8-1 and one in their last 10 games against the NFC East, okay? That's usually a recipe for failure because we all know the easiest way to have a successful season is to win within your division. So this is quite an anomaly that here the Giants are without a win in the NFC East, and yet they still have a winning record and are in position to control their own destiny and do something really cool. So it's an anomaly. Let's not make any mistake about it. And that's one of the things that I know Brian Dable just addressed, and we'll get to the injury report in just a minute. But he said, hey, it's a division game. You know, it's a December game. It's a division game. I mean, if you can't get up for this and play your butt off, then – you know, what do you deserve? Well, you know, well, you're right. But Brian said, in, in fairness... And, and against a comparable foe. No, you're not right. like last week when they were going up against Hercules. Yeah, li- listen, folks, you can be upset. Nobody was happy after last week's game against the Eagles, okay? But if you wanted to be realistic, I mean, really realistic, and nobody, not you out there, nobody is a bigger Giants fan than this guy right here. Oh, I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm not saying that... That, that's the truth. You, you wear it on your sleeve. It's your heart and your soul, and that's fine. But nobody, in this, including this guy, w- when we would sit and talk, whether it was on the air or off the air, I mean, nobody was confident going into the game against the Eagles. In fact, it was even less than confident. It was like you were hoping they weren't going to get trounced, which unfortunately they did. They were just up against a team that was – quite frankly, more talented. They were up against a team that was far more healthy. Uh, you know, it is what it is. And But, again, no one's making excuses. No one's making excuses. Dable's not making excuses. The players aren't making excuses. But if you want to be realistic, you look at a situation, p- guys who are playing are backups to backups, both on offense, the receiving core, and the defensive backfield. I mean – Against a very potent team, which is arguably, I don't even think it's arguably anymore. I think the Eagles have to be viewed as the best team in the league with a very good chance of playing in a big show. So, But what the Giants need to do, it's done, it's over with. And in fairness to the coaching staff, you know, I heard some nonsense this week on the radio. You know, the Giants, uh, their problem is they were concentrating, they've been concentrating too much on uh, the playoffs, the P word. Let me tell you something. Paul and I were discussing it before we went on the air. Not once, not once this entire season, from game one 
to where we are right now? Has there ever been a, a murmur? Nothing about playoffs, not from the coaches, not from the players, nobody. So, you know, we got into December and the conversation was, okay, it's fun to be playing December, uh, meaningful games in December, but that's it. So the Giants weren't looking ahead. They are what they are. And what they are is 7-5-1 and one in the playoff picture. If they win this week, they're very much in the playoff picture. If they don't, it's a giant step backwards. No pun intended. If they win, it's a giant step forward. No question about it, Russ. And I think that's what people need to just concentrate on right now is this one game on Sunday. This, this, is, this is it. Concentrate on one game at a time. The injury report, uh, Leonard Williams and Ellison Smith and Daniel Bellinger all will be limited today. They're giving a, a load management day off to Dexter Lawrence and Julian Love. Uh, Adore Jackson, Azudu, and Lemieux will not practice today. Jackson's going to be on the side with the trainers doing some testing to see how his knee responds. And I think they may try to get him to do some stuff tomorrow. So he's kind of on the arrow up, but they're going to be real cautious with him. I was just going to follow up because I left when you were still getting this injury report. Is the fact that Adore, they want to check him tomorrow tomorrow, is there any kind of thought that he might play this week? I think there's some quiet optimism. Like real quiet? Well, you got, you know, again, today he's going to be with the trainers on the side doing some things. He's not going to take any team reps today from what Coach Dable said. So I think see how he responds to the trainers today. And if they clear him to do some team reps, we'll find out more tomorrow. Well, that's, that sounds good, you know, Paulie. James and Ward are in concussion protocol. Uh, um, Saquon Barkley will be full in practice today. That's good news. Xavier McKinney has been ruled out of not only practice, but out of the game against Washington. Well, you knew that. He had had some optimism that he'd be able to make it back, but after they took the pins out at the end of last week, it turns out the hand is not healed as much as it needs to be. Right. So he's out against Washington. And Ben Bredesen is uh, closer to being activated, according to Dable, said he thought he was really close last week. Uh, but didn't make it, and now they have to see if he's going to be uh, possibly activated for this Sunday's game. Also, uh, McFadden, who you'll recall got uh, jolted in the game the right. other day, uh, he is going to work in full today. So that is the entire injury report as it stands. All right. Uh, the, as Paul says, that is the injury report. Before we get to the phones, which is 201-939-4513, let's take care of a little business for you Giant fans, make sure you go subscribe to the Giants Huddle Podcast. The podcast features a rapid reaction right after each and every game with one of our analysts, an episode midweek featuring an interview with a national analyst, and then a game preview featuring a long-form interview with a current Giants player, an exclusive sit-down with Bob Papa and head coach Brian Dable, and an opponent preview of that week's opponent. Search for Giants Huddle on your favorite podcast platform or listen on the Giants app or at Giants.com slash podcast. Again, the number is 201-939-4513. Let's open up the phone lines this morning with, uh, or this afternoon, I should say, with Brandon here in New Jersey. Brandon, how you doing, my friend? You're on with Russ and Paul. How's it going, Russ? How's it going, Paul? Hi. Um, how's it going? Um, so I've been trying to call in all season. It's been a little difficult to get in. So I've been slowly compiling like a little list. But I do know Russ keeps the callers on a short leash, so I'm going to keep it to one, all right? But, Paul, one time soon I will be calling with some of these other things on the list. Well, go ahead. Um, if you want, you got more than one question you can ask. Just don't let, let's not make it the uh, Gettysburg Address. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 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 rapid uh, fire. Go ahead. No huddle uh, offense. I'm going to start with the ones I think that matter next week. Uh, I, I want to talk, I guess, about, like, Kafka and the play calling. It's not that I think he calls bad plays or anything like that. I, I think that um, – I don't think he corrects well enough. Like, if you start to realize, like, on third down that we're just not getting it done on with the pass rush up front, um, at some point you would think that you would start getting your quarterback some quick outlets or – Somewhere where your quarterback knows if I'm in trouble, I can get the ball out right here. And I don't see that happening nearly uh, enough. I, it seems like sometimes he just gets in these, like, 
everybody go down the field, let's get some yards, and then it just kind of leaves Jones by himself in the pocket with nobody around him, no uh, outlets, no checkdowns, nothing. So. All right, Brandon, let me just start to answer, and then I'm going to let Paul finish because, uh, you know, Paul brought up a, a really good point last week, and we were sitting here, remember, with John Schmelk, and some people were saying, why don't we see the Giants open this up? Why don't we see the Giants do that? And they were talking about that going into the um, – into the Eagles game, Brandon. And, yeah, that would have been a really good game for the Giants to open things up with a, a walking wounded backups to backups playing both on offense and defense against a team that is firing on all cylinders, no pun intended, no cliche usage. Uh, the Eagles, where their defense, their front was for, is ferocious, their secondary is outstanding. I, I mean, y y y y you can't beat... Uh, a, a, a tank with a pea shooter. And that's what they were up against. And, and you, you know, it just, if we're going to be honest, we're going to be honest. You, you, you can't ask guys. It's different if you're playing with a full complement. If you're playing, listen, if I had Wandell Robinson in there and Sterling Shepard was back and, and, you know, this guy and that guy was making catches. But you don't. You're playing with backups to backups. And in the secondary, there's no McKinney. There's no Adoree Jackson. You know, it's very, very easy to say we should do this. We should be more creative. I agree with you, but you got to have what to be creative with. And, you know, for the last few, was it a month, Paul? For the last month, they haven't had what to be creative with. Right. You know, one of the things you got to, you got to kind of, a great analogy to use here is, is the chef in the kitchen. Uh, if he's got limited ingredients, how's he supposed to make the soup? I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. You you you, you can make something. You can make some some nasty broth. And, and nobody likes soup more than you. I I am a that. big soup guy. <laughs> you can make some nasty broth, but it's really not going to be a very hearty soup. I mean, you just don't have enough ingredients to to do it. You know, I mean, uh, T Mac uh, Thomas McGehee, the Giant special teams coordinator likes to call his unit stirring the gumbo because you never know every week who you're going to have available right. because either they're stolen by the offense or the defense or there's injuries and he just doesn't have guys able to play. So he says, every week I just stir the gumbo. It's whatever I have available to me. That's what I throw out there. All right, what, what are you going to do? What's your next question, Brandon? Um, so I, I guess I'll just make a bunch of comments and I'll just take – your no, no, uh, thoughts ma on ma it. Ma um, do me a favor. Make the, make, make, make the one comment, please. It's, uh, okay. Just, just comments. Just want your opinion. Um, how do you guys feel about, like, the bye weeks? Like, I feel like uh, Dable in future going forward should just make sure it's known that, like, bye week doesn't mean it's a vacation. You're in the middle of the season uh, still. You shouldn't be on vacation, Brandon, and it should be more of a reflection week and not a vacation uh, 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 week. Brandon, th thanks for the call. I, I don't know where you're going with that. I, I mean, nobody thinks this is you – know, you know what? The guys were all in, in, in Monday, no, the last two days. Nobody thinks it was – thought it was a vacation. I, I mean, to say that is silly. Not only is it silly, Brandon, it's unfair. It, it's almost labeling something that was that wasn't. I mean, it wasn't a vacation week. Every team gives everybody the same time off. They give it, play, it, it gives you a chance to rest up, get well, and come back refreshed. But it's not a vacation week. You know, so to say that just uh, is not fair. You know, not, not fair at all. Let's now go to uh, our friend uh, in Delaware, Coach Marv. Hello, Coach Marv. You're on with Russ and Paul. How you doing, Russ? Good, good. How you doing? Paul, I'm hey, all coach. right. How you doing, Paul? It's good to see you guys on the screen. You know? <laughs> good, good to be here. <laughs> uh, the guy that just was calling about the vacation, I know where he was going. He was going to the McKinney. Thing. Of course he is. That's where he was of going. Of course yeah. he is. And, and, and those guys deserve to get away if they need to get away. Yeah. The only thing you could do, I used to tell the guys, just protect yourself and be safe. That's yes. all you can tell them. That's it. Um, yeah, people are going to – people. No, no, you know what, Marv, and that's a very good point because I thought the same thing was going to Mc, uh, the McKinney thing. It's not fair. I remember, and, uh, you know, I'll, you'll tell us what you want, but I remember 
Um, Willis Reed, when somebody was once complaining about uh, Jason Williams and somebody else being out, and, you know, it was like midnight or something, and uh, you know, remember, Willis was a former player, and Willis said, yep. the, the reporters were questioning him, Willis said, do you guys understand these young men, they don't get off till late in the evening. For them to be out at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, it's not strange. So, you know, when a guy has some right. free time, it, it's just, I, that's an unfair assessment. I mean, maybe I digress, but yeah. I'm just trying to make a point. Guys have lives, too. Right. But go ahead, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, those things happen. I, I mean, I had it in the season, my rules, and I couldn't control it. But I tell them to be careful, and I know some of them will go out and play pickup football and I had a couple of injuries where one of my best center linemen was a center. He broke his hand playing pickup football game after we already played the day before. Oh, and, uh, and and anytime you're playing football or doing anything, you can get hurt anytime. It doesn't matter. You walk out there, you can get hurt. Yep. But uh, while I was calling, um, uh, this is going to be a tough game this week, I believe. You guys went over the injury list. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago with how I feel about um, next man up, and that's where we are, next man up, not next man up. Um, um, I'm just hoping someone like Ojolari and um, and uh, Thibodeau, uh, I, 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 I sense these two are really creating something You're right. here where they are playing really good football. Thibodeau's not getting the numbers in um, sacks. But he's he's really um, putting pressure on quarterbacks lately, and I don't know if it's the brace that's that's got him running a lot better, but he, he's playing a lot more active than he did when he had the brace on. So I'm I'm happy with that, and so I, I believe for us to do anything, we need those two to produce because that's what happened to us last week. Um, they had some good schemes of where they pressure um, hurts, and that's the way I felt the game plan needs to be, is pressure and hurts. They pressured him, but on the back end, he came up with some good throws, and they didn't, they didn't cover the guy. He, I mean, he, they, they were there, but he made excellent throws. They beat the coverage a few times when they were pressuring him, and I thought they pressured him well. And um, I hope they come up with something like that type of scheme this week because, uh, you know, we, we're going to get the best of Washington this week where they're going to be ready to play. They rested up this week, last week, and we played. So it's going to be interesting to see how healthy they look and how healthy we are when this weekend comes. Coach Marvin, so, to, to hammer home your point, if there is one area of this team that has clearly improved during the slump, it's the Giants' pass rush. There is absolutely yeah. no question about it. It is tangible. Uh, Old Jolari returning has been valuable. And Thibodeau, since he got rid of that brace, has shown more strength and more quickness, uh, more athleticism. The, Gi- the Giants' pass rush in the last month is clearly different than it was the first half of the season. Yes, it is. It definitely has been. It's been energetic since uh, Ojolari has come. You, you, you know what, and, and uh, C- Coach? I'm glad that's a great word, energetic. It was, but it's not just Ojolari. It, it's uh, Thibodeau as, as well. He's just been. Yes. He's been different the last three, four weeks. You can see. Uh, again, I don't know exactly what it is. But just getting better, maybe may be more comfortable. And Week Martindale has when he's been questioned in our weekly get together with him he says hey it's not just about sacks it's about pressures it's about getting uh, yes. holding calls and penalties quarterback and, uh, hits and all of that yeah. stuff. just imagine how good this defense would look against the pass if they had even one or two of their regulars back in the secondary because yeah, it, is, right. it is a and b together make c and even though the pass rush has been better the secondary got even more ravaged with injury over the last month because of losing but, Jackson and McKinney. And you're right on spot, um, Paul, right on spot. If you take Jackson and put them in that secondary on those plays where, um, where Jalen made some excellent throws, and the coverage wasn't bad, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great, um, I think you can. You, I think they get those sacks. I think they 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 make him throw sooner than he wants to. 
Um, and that's why I felt you have to do the Hurts because they're running this triple option from the wishbone days where you got a guy, he, 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 he sticks it in the belly of the running back, he's mm-hmm. reading the defensive end. He can give it to the running back or he can run it himself. Sure. And if somebody's coming up, he can throw. So that's the triple option. And it's very difficult to stop a triple option once it gets moving. Good news, so coach. Good it? news, though. Heineke isn't that What's guy. That? They got a game now <laughs> no, on Sunday not. night where that <laughs> is not part of the equation, okay? It's no. part of just getting no. after him, making sure he doesn't run horizontal like he did on the fourth down completion two weeks ago because that's the one yeah. thing about Heineke. He is a gunslinger. He will hold the ball as long as possible and then force it in there to make a play. And what happened on that fourth down completion two weeks ago? The defensive back took his eyes off the receiver and looked at Heineke and gave him that extra second or two to find the receiver who was running a scramble drill. And that's why that pass was completed. These DBs have to make sure. Just plaster to your guy. Don't worry about Heineke taking off. Your front seven will deal with him, okay? Right. Your back exactly. four just needs to worry about playing those receivers and not the quarterback. And I think that will be the key this weekend, uh, especially with the receiver like McLaurin they, they have to deal with. And uh, the running game, they have a pretty good running game. I like the back for Washington, who runs very tough and hard. All of, if you notice, every time he's running, he's falling forward. Always, Brian backwards. Robinson, so, very, always falling so forward. It, yes, yeah. So those are the two keys, and I agree with you, Paul, that if you stick to your guys when they break down like that, you, you'll be all right. You, you, you should be okay. And, and that's all you want to do. Are you okay? Are you competing? And then make plays within that. And we'll, hopefully we'll be okay. But this is a big game. So it was good to talk to you guys. Always okay. a pleasure, Coach. Be well, Coach. All Call right. again. Call again. 201-939-4513 is the number. That's 201-939-4513. Uh, what do you say we now travel up to Maine and check in with uh, Jeff? Hello, Jeff. You're on with Russ and Paul. How are we doing today? Hey, great! Thanks. Uh, afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I appreciate your guys' knowledge, but also the fact that you're true long-term fans. So I like that. Um, I've got a big picture uh, defensive question. Um, you know, everyone knows we have two tremendous uh, uh, inside uh, defensive linemen, but um, to consistently stop the run, don't we really need three or four? Like well, Philly had five or six, I think. Well, here's the thing. Like, There's no doubt. If you had the luxury yeah. to fill out the rest of the thin spots on the roster, you'd love to have another run-stuffing guy in there to take some of the snaps away from both Lawrence and Williams so that they don't have to play 95% of the snaps every single weekend. Why not? It'd be great. But you're talking about a luxury that this team does not have in the year 2022. Well, I think you and I discuss this or, excuse me, off the air all the time. Jeff, I, I think what you have to realize, Joe Shane, this is his first year. He came in to a situation, all he had was a draft. He, he had no money, no money to spend. Uh, he was inherited an, an awful cap situation. And, you know, he's doing his best, did his best to correct it. The team is 7-5-1 and one, coming into, you know, what was a very rough situation. So you're not wrong, but you got you don't just accumul- accumulate that right away. It, it takes time. You know, this, oh, this, no, this, yeah. this, uh, this um, Eagles team, they didn't do this overnight. You know, I will say yeah. this about the Rush defense. Um, they they had a one four game stretch in the middle of the season where they were really holding it down pretty well, but in the first four game stretch and then the subsequent four game stretch after the good part, uh, they've had trouble dealing and, with the run and also with injuries uh, being part of well and and a couple of reasons why I'll tell you, the Giants corners are not great in run support, that's been part of the problem. The other part is Xavier McKinney being out of the lineup now. Because McKinney is often coming up and helping out against the run. And I'm sorry, but Jason Pinnock is not Xavier McKinney. Doesn't mean he's not an NFL player, 
but he's not Xavier McKinney, who we all believe is a Pro Bowl caliber talent. That's a big deal, okay, because McKinney plays all over the defense. He impacts a lot when he's out of the lineup. Now, I will say this. In terms of going forward, and I've had people ask me about this on Twitter, how do the Giants fix the rush defense going into next year? It's a premature question, but I will tell you this. You'll have another year out of McFadden, the Indiana rookie this year, who just came into the starting lineup about a month ago. You'll have another year with him. Darian Beavers was having a great camp Uh, uh, until he blew out his knee. Yeah, that was I'm telling you, folks... And remember now, he got hurt, and then a short while later, they wound up bringing Jalen Smith back off the free agency pile because they were were hurting for a backer. The truth of the matter is, Darian Beavers was going to wind up being a starter on this team this year as a rookie. He is a stud. I'm glad you brought that up because, in fairness, you know, the season goes, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I forgot about him. We were standing next to each other for a couple of those practices, looking at each other, saying, who the hell is this guy? I mean, he was not good. He was outstanding. And he he was so good at Cincinnati. You know, I wanted him in, in the fifth round as a steal. We wound up getting him in the sixth, uh, the, the, uh, the personnel department did. But he hits like a truck. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the people in the NFC East are not going to want to face him next year. Trust me. Now, that doesn't mean the Giants can't still look for upgrades on the interior, but I do think you're going to see some upside out of both of these rookies this year who are going to give them more in year two. What else you got for us, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Well, I agree 100%. And I think Joe Shane's been perfect, everything he's done since then. I guess I was talking more in, in, the, in the draft for next year. I just didn't want to say the D word too soon, <laughs> you know. Well, but, um, well you, but, you know, let, 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 look. Going into the draft for next year, let's let's wait and see how this all ends up because I can tell you right now, if you ask me going into the draft, pick pick <laughs> whoever you want, but how about a bunch of receivers, okay? You're going to be picking pretty low, just know that. Yeah. Regardless of how right. this ends up, you're going yeah, to be yeah. picking pretty low, which just further enhances the best athlete available kind of thing or best player available, I should say. No, true. And I know Howard made the point, you know, we need a receiver, interior lineman, and I would add an uh, interior defensive lineman. But, yeah, it's too early to talk about the draft anyway. So that's all I got. Okay. Uh, thanks, gentlemen. Thanks. All right, Jeff. Thank you. 201-939-4513 is the number. 201-939-4513. Phone lines are open. Pearson is at the controls waiting to pick up your call. So give him a shout and, uh, you know. Listen, this week is what it is. You know, uh, what, what was the, what, how does Parcells open up? They can't say you didn't do it because you did it. By the way, NFL Network reporting that the Jets are pre- prepping Mike White to start against the Lions this week with Zach Wilson as the backup instead of Joe Flacco. I only mention that because there is, again, that outside chance, as John and Lance like to remind me, that the Lions could win out and still be in the playoff picture, and they will be playing the Jets on Sunday. Yeah, so uh, Giants can use some Jets help. Some San Fran help against Seattle on Thursday, too. Right, right. right Even right. more important. Paul's got a belay me. He, he's, he's got every permutation and <laughs> combination all, all, all figured out. But again, What else am I going to do? I don't sleep. Uh, uh, boy, I'll tell you, you must be a piece of work at home. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your wife's name? Gail. Gail. Gail must bang her head against the wall because, I mean, he's, he, I, you know, other people count sheep. You count fumbles. You count injury reports. Well, all, all these other things that you count. They know I'm hopeless. Wins and losses. My family knows I'm hopeless. Wins and losses. They just, they just oh, well, he's doing what he's doing. Let him go to his office and do what he does but but really you know again and, and Paul's right i mean mathematically after this week it doesn't mean anything is won or it's over but if the giants win this week put them in a the driver's seat is that a fair word yes uh, or, or very yes. very much in, in more in control of their own destiny uh, than if they lose but but to me you just need, forget postseason forget playoffs you need to win to feel good. You, you need to get this, ugh, 
out of your system. Yeah. It's, it's, what are, what are they in the last six games? One, four, and one. The slump needs to end. Yeah, it, it just you got to put a tourniquet on it. It's it's got to stop. The hemorrh- hemorrhaging has to stop. And and if they can win this game, then they feel good. Then they feel good going into um, Minnesota. Into Minnesota. And by the way, you know. I know that you can't cry about the schedule because it is what it is. But how about the fact that Minnesota plays a game on Saturday night? The Giants then play Sunday night and then have to go to Minnesota for a Saturday afternoon game. Yeah, I thought that was... Think think about those logistics for just a second. Well, can I tell you what? I think the league screws up with that. In a lot of instances, first of all, when certain people can take your, your, your bye week is early or your bye week is late, like for example, Washington, they, the Giants played Washington, right? Then they had a bye, and then, but Washington had a bye, and then they played the Giants again. Yeah. So for them, it's like back to back. You know what? It's almost like, again, this is just me, folks. If everybody needed a break. If everybody needed a break, then then oh my, it's I like in baseball. There's almost like an all star break for a few days. So like, okay, so give everybody a bye week at the same time. See, I wouldn't care about that. See that, that I know no I know TV and nobody would want to yeah, do that. Well, and TV obviously yeah. wanted the Giants in Washington on Sunday Night Football. Yeah, oh yeah. But to be honest, okay, it would have been a heck of a lot more fair. If the Giants game, as was anticipated all along, was going to be moved to Saturday. Had that happened, and the Vikings game was on Saturday, and the Giants game was on Saturday, and then the Giants were going out to Minnesota for the following Saturday, it would have been much more equitable. But as it stands now, the Giants won't be getting in probably until like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning on Monday which basically shoots away half a day of preparation as they prepare for a Friday trip to Minnesota because they've got a game there on Saturday. You know In what? the meantime, Minnesota's going to be home by late Saturday night, and they've already got a day and a half of jump and on prep tra- for and, the Giants. And they're not traveling. You know what, Paul? And I f- they're home. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I forgot, I, and you had pointed this out to me, I, I had forgotten that... December 17th or 18th, it was like a maybe, which when that game was Well, the Giants game was one of five games that had been alerted by the league that could potentially move to a Saturday triple header. But instead, NBC decided they wanted the game for Sunday night football, and the Giants got flexed now to Sunday night. I mean, talk about logistics from a coach's perspective, and that's where I'm talking from. Coach's perspective and player's perspective. I always try to take their angle on it because to me that's the most realistic angle that you could look at. Forget about anything else. From their perspective, the preparation deal next week coming up is detrimental to the Giants. Yeah, no, that and it is. Clearly, clearly favors Minnesota as if they need it. Again, folks, uh, phone lines are open. Pearson at the controls, ready to take your call, 201-939-4513. That is 201-939-4513. Uh, you know, yeah, I'd like to bring up something else. Paul and I were talking about this uh, earlier in the uh, dining room. Um, th- th- I don't understand. For, for the life of me, and, and you see it, you hear it, uh, on talk radio, you you read it on Twitter. The questioning about Daniel Jones boggles my mind. I said this right here, talking with P- Paul, maybe three weeks in, uh, four weeks into the season, saying Daniel Jones is doing everything to secure his future here as the quarterback of the Giants. Mm-hmm. And there's talking, what should they do with him? Is he the guy? Maybe they should look someplace else. You want to talk, I mean, is Daniel Jones the Rodney Dangerfield of quarterbacks? Because he gets (laughs) no respect. I mean, he has played, for lack of a better term, his ass off. Daniel Jones has played his ass off this entire season. Runs, throws, takes his lumps, has nobody to throw to, and people complaining. I mean, I listen, Joe Shane and Brian Dable came in and 
they had to ascertain what they had. That, in fairness to them, whether it was Daniel, whether it's Saquon, whether this, this and that, I'm telling you, and this is no inside information, none whatsoever. I'm telling you, it's Ross Salzberg telling you, I think Paul will concur. Daniel Jones is your quarterback this year, next year, and for years after that. Watch. Yeah. I, to, I, uh, to give you a real simple analogy, Daniel Jones is going to the blackjack table, and he's playing against a short deck, and he still has chips in his hand because this team has a winning record. It's uh, about time people wake up. They have seven wins. And what did you tell me? Five or come five fourth quarter victories come from behind victories. Hello, five. Okay, I, I mean, what do you want? I, I mean, I'm just saying for the people out there. I and then this is media people too, people who should know better. I don't get it. Is, is it just okay? Is is it sexy to talk about quarterbacks? Because you know they, you know, when you talk about quarterbacks, it gets everybody going. I mean, I just think the discussion. Well, quarterbacks are magnets, Russ. That's y just y the way yeah, it is. Yeah, they are. You're, you're, you know, you're that's right. what it is. They're you're, magnets. You're right about that. And and you know, folks can't help themselves because it, it does sell papers. You know, mm -hmm. let's let's not kid ourselves. It Two, does sell papers. Two zero one nine three nine four five one three is the number. Let's head down to Dallas and check in with Jamal. Hello, Jamal. You're on with Russ and Paul. What's going on, fellas? Thanks for taking my call. How y'all doing today? Hi, how, how are you? you? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Um, I did talk, great segue about Daniel Jones. So, I'm a, I'm a DJ fan, you know, and I know it's a love and hate relationship with uh, with us Giants fans regarding DJ. Um, I like to think he has a uh, tangible skill set. I do have a question, however, is um, what do you think is his hindrance? Other than the O-line, the lack of receivers, the lack of weapons that we know he doesn't have. What do you see is it, is is his hindrance in progression? Is it due to the lack of receivers? Well, or let, let, let me just ask you this, Jamal. You tell me. I mean, you want a quarterback who can throw the ball. Now, if you want a right. qu quarterback, I'm not trying to be sarcastic to you, my friend. If you want a quarterback who can throw the ball, you need two things. You, you need him to be able to be protected so he has time to throw the ball and then you need somebody to be able to catch the ball in other words you need somebody to be able to throw I, the ball too i think he gets that yeah, Russ. No, he's I asking he for the priority i think the priority is that the receiver room yeah. needs the upgrade more than the uh, offensive line room and that's not to say the offensive line's pass protection has been stellar because it right. hasn't been but right. it's my belief that if the receiver room is what it was supposed to be if Tony had worked out, if Shepard had not gotten injured, if Galladay had played like the back of his football card, and you had all and, of and, these and, guys and, and doing what they're supposed to do. And Wondell Robinson was, Wondell coming, Robinson. Around, was, was coming around, then he got hurt. He was. I mean, look he at was. that. Look at that. You're talking about four receivers, four receivers yeah. who all had realistic expectations of being legitimate offensive weapons. Legitimate. So I do have it. So, and, so and they're all gone. World, they're all gone. Okay, go ahead. No, I mean, that. to me, that's your biggest issue for Daniel Jones. So, so, so in the Twitter world and Facebook world and all these G, you know, social media GMs, um, some people would say is it is that he processes slower than other quarterbacks. From y'all's standpoint, do y'all see that as an issue? No, 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 I don't. Jamal, if you ask me, I don't see it. But I will say this. Okay. I will say this to you. Uh, you sound like you got a good feel for the game. I'm, I'm being honest with you. If I wasn't in the business, okay. If I wasn't, if I didn't do what I do, I wouldn't be on social media. I am because <laughs> no, no. I'm telling you the truth. I am. <laughs> You're right, Russ. I wouldn't be either. No, I, I, I am Jamal because it's part of the job. We have to be, do it because I have to be. But, but what, what, what I mean by that is. Jamal, you're gonna you make yourself nuts every time somebody you, you know. First of all, in the world today, nobody wants to be right anymore. Or being right, being, right. being right is not the priority. Being first is the pri priority. Hey, right. let so me my... give, let me give you an example. Uh, are you a baseball fan? No, no, I follow a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, my point is, 
Aaron Judge signed with the Giant uh, with the um, Yankees last week, right? He resigned. Right, right. Okay. And everybody thought he was going to the Giants. <laughs> the, the reporter had it out there because everybody wants to be first. Twitter said it. It had to be true, right? There you go. <laughs> right. Jamal, right. I, I think to better answer your question a little bit, every single quarterback, and this this is important because there are so many of these amateur coaches and amateur scouts who like to pluck a, a play off of the All-22 on Game Pass, put it up on mm. Twitter, and say, mm. look, look, he missed the receiver. He didn't see the receiver downfield. Oh, the sky's falling. Yeah, but here's the problem. <laughs> here's the problem, okay? Every single head coach and offensive coordinator, every single week in the NFL – looks at their quarterback, and will find at least a handful of those very same plays. Because there's not exactly. one quarterback alive, including Tom Brady, who is right. going to do every single play on time and exactly the way it was drawn up. And if you think that that's reality, okay? No, right. If you think that that's reality, that they actually do that, then you're living in a fantasy world. Because that so doesn't exist. Things. So I got two more things. Next, next thing is, next thing is, if we let Daniel Jones walk, oh, there's many other teams that will pick him up. That's Gone no straight, uh, not uh, even close. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Many teams, you, you know what? There'll be teams that will be picking him up. And, and I heard some silly thing on the radio yesterday saying, why should the Giants, uh, uh, like, like kind of bet against themselves or, or bid against themselves? Who the, the comment was? Who else would want Daniel Jones? Daniel Jones would have no shortage of suitors out there. Trust me on that. Baker Thanks for the call. Baker Mayfield found a home. Baker Mayfield found a home in a day and playing on prime time. <laughs> there, there you go, Jamal. <laughs> you know what I mean? My, yeah. my last thing. My last thing. My last thing is. My last thing is. Do we get any help this week on our defense? Do we get anybody back? From injuries this week. Yeah, it looks All like Leonard injuries. Williams is limited today, but the arrow's pointing up, and there's some very soft optimism that Adoree Jackson could maybe still make uh, it for uh, Washington. Re real soft. Thank you for the call, Jamal. 201-939-4513. Would you do me a favor? Do, do that little thing where you got all excited. It reminded me of the guy in Psycho. You know, could, could you, that, that little screaming thing there, could you do that again? I, I thought that was a little across between De Niro and Pacino. Uh, <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> oh, what do you say we go to PA and check in with our friend Joe? Hello, Joe. You're on with Russ and Paul. How you doing? Hi. Good. Uh, just a couple of things that bother me. When I, I watch the games every week. I've been a long-time Giants fan. But um, the penalties are starting to really become very annoying. All these, um, you know, showing off to things which flex his muscles, we get a penalty. When it's 3-15, and 15, we get a penalty. You know, and it's getting kind of ridiculous. Um, I hope they're being addressed also by the coaches. Yeah, they have referees out of practice all the time. And this is something Parcells started back in the 80s, where you have these referees at practice to form good habits with the players. Now, the Giants, unfortunately this year, as the season has progressed, they're actually in the upper half of the NFL in flags. Uh, that's disappointing, but I also think that's partially because defensively they've lost so many of their starters and some of these backups are getting flagged because they're just not quite as polished or as talented as their starters are. But the, the one that bothers me, and it's all over the league. In fact, when I was on, I think it was a Washington uh, Commanders podcast a couple of weeks ago, they asked me for one guaranteed lock that we were going to see between the Giants and Washington at MetLife two weeks ago. And I said, I guarantee you that there will be an illegal formation call because the NFL is going gaga goo goo over illegal formation. They just can't wait to throw a flag for illegal formation. Somebody's in the wrong spot somewhere in like every single NFL game this year. I think these, these refs are getting paid extra money every time they throw that flag. I agree. Um, another thing that, that's been really bothering me is that Heineke and the Washington team. I'm, by the way, I'm in middle of Washington territory here, and I'm the only one that has Giants flags up. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, Heineke and the team over there, they, they gear on who came off the practice squad, especially in the secondary. Um, and they, they even announced that on the TV last week. That um, I mean, when they played them last time. 
that, oh, yeah, this guy's just off the thing, and they gear towards that defender. Well, well that's com- – l- l- Why l- wouldn't you? Joe, thank you for the call. That's, that's common sense. By, by the way, though, can I add, the Giants were playing with four opening day regular season starters on defense for the fourth quarter in overtime, and the best Washington could do was score 20 points. The best they could do was get that one scoring drive, which included a fourth down play, that sent the game into overtime. And despite having all of these backups on the field and Washington having two overtime possessions, they still couldn't score. whoop de damn do So how great is that Washington offense? Well, well bottom line is this. whoop de damn do this whoop de damn do that uh, Giants, now, Giants should have won that game, and they didn't. So absolutely. they got to take care of business. I want to give you a couple numbers here, Russ, Go just ahead. please, because I've done, I done my usual research, as always. Okay? Uh, the Washington Commanders have been called or flagged for an NFL leading 11 pass interferences in their secondary. Number one in the league, right. 11 pass interference calls. Their secondary is second in the league in total flags against them. Second. That is a penalty-ridden defensive backfield. If I'm the Giants, uh, there are moments, and I said this two weeks ago, where I would actually take some shots against them knowing how penalty-ridden and how sloppy that secondary can be. Because why not? Go ahead. The officials are happy throwing flags. Let them throw them. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, because one game runs into the other. Didn't they do that early on, on a bomb to um, Darius, to Slayton? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's... I would not, I would not, be, I would not be afraid. And uh, again, I'm not saying to open it up and, and primarily rely on those kinds of throws, but take a few shots. Take a few shots. Because this commander's secondary is very apt. Number two in the National Football League in drawing penalty flags amongst NFL secondaries. I think that's a very significant fact that needs needs to be exploited. 201-939-4513. That is 201-939-4513. We've got about 10 more minutes before we call it a day. Uh, I, li- listen, I think you brought it up or... or well, maybe the caller brought it By up. By the way, the number was 29. 29 flags called against the Washington secondary this year. New Orleans has 34. Washington is second with 29 right. defensive back penalties. Think about that. That's two over two a game. Yeah. That's over two a game, Russ. But, take advantage. But, the you know, you also have what, have to have what to take advantage with, okay? Yeah. And it's not yeah. like you have, you know, your A-listers, you know, Running deep. Yeah, but you don't no, have to be a great receiver to draw a flag. No, no, but but again, uh, in the mindset of the defender, you know, I'm going against this guy. I'm yeah, not going against I get that you. Guy. No, it, it's just, you know, it's... Understood. It, it's a, I don't know if you call it a comfort zone or, or a matter of confidence, I guess one leads to the other. I, I, I just think, you know, this is one of those games, you know, we looked on it early in the season, uh, we we looked at the back end of the schedule. We knew what it would be, but it comes down to this. This I, is what I, you want. I, I mean, listen, I remember we were coming down in the elevator after that tie. After they tied, finished tied with the commanders here. And I remember somebody in the elevator, uh, and I, I forget who it was, another member of the media were coming down in the elevator, and a and guy goes, boy, this tie can come back to bite the Giants on ES, you know, down the road this season. And I just turned and said, how about what a loss would have done? I mean, <laughs> significant difference what a loss would have done. They tied. So so they, they win this. The Giants should be in pretty good shape. Not, not the best. They, there's still work to be done. But if the Giants win this, automatically they take over the tie with uh, the commanders. So that's very, very important. First up, San Fran's got to knock off Seattle. That would really help. Well, yeah. I mean, but y- you know what? Uh, You're going to watch the game just as I will. But uh, And I'll be throwing things across the room. 
at, at the same at the same point, what's the old saying? You can't take care you, of your you, business. You can't. I understand. You can't expect help from others if you're not willing to help yourself. Yeah, very true. And they have very to true. Help, help themselves. See, this goes back to what I said the other day, though, Russ, and I don't think you were on the show when I did it. The Giants control their own destiny. Let's make that very clear. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 I think that's what, what we've been trying to drive at. Uh, Paul mentioned the permutations and the combinations if they lose, but you know, right now, they're, they're in charge. They're in charge. They're the bosses. They win the games they need to win. They're in, yeah. and nobody can take it from them. They are in complete control of their fate, 100%. Now, after this week, depending upon different things that happen, they may not be in complete control of their fate, but they are as we sit here today. And that's all that really matters because the entire first 75% of your schedule is all about setting yourself up so that you're in position to do what you have to do. You have an opportunity to earn your way to reap the riches of a good season. Uh, uh, That's you, what it's about. Are you glad that they're playing at night, or would you prefer they were playing during are the day? Are you period? serious? Do you know what I'm going to be like all day Sunday? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I yeah. want to, I'm, I'm after Sunday 1 o'clock every single day to have to wait till 8.20 for kickoff? Oh, this how, many, is, how many miles are you going to walk, Paul? Probably 20. You, you, you know what, Pearson? He's, he, he, you know... I don't want to be gross here, but you know when you travel on an airplane and they have, they have the vomit bags in front in case you get sick? Yeah. He, he's going to need to walk around with a bag all day long oh until up to goodness. kickoff. You're right. Hey, I'm telling you, folks, I usually see Paul about— You know when the sauce bubbles too long, it actually stains and burns the pot? <laughs> I'm going to be a burned pot by the time this kickoff gets underway. I, I usually run into Paul— uh, somewhere around 10, 15, 10, 30 on game days. And, like, basically, he he's like a zombie. He he walks by you. He's talking to himself. You know, it's like he looks like one of the guys that was in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, you know, just ready to, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got time for one more quick call. Let's go up to Albany and check in with Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Don't have a lot of time. What do you got for us, buddy? You know, these guys that want to replace Jones, I would remind them that Tom Brady and Kirk Cousins and these guys, they don't go to teams like the Giants. They go to teams that are loaded with offense, but they need a quarterback. So if they let him go, don't think Tom Brady's coming here. That's number one. Number two. Just just remember, the papers also screamed to get Russell Wilson during the offseason. And I insisted yeah. that that would be the dumbest move in football history. And nobody listened to me. I got crushed on Twitter. You're I right. got crushed by the callers. And I said only a sucker would make a deal for Russell Wilson. How do you think the Broncos feel today? You, you know what? Uh, that, thank you for the call, Bruce. That is absolutely on the money. I remember that. Everybody. Oh, yeah, I mean, get rid of Daniel Jones. I mean, come on, sell your soul. Just sell, trade picks. I mean, it was ad nauseum. And, and listen, has Russell Wilson been great in this league? He certainly has. He's going to the Hall of Fame. But, but how God you, bless him. How do you think the Denver Broncos are feeling right about now? Everybody's got an answer. Wah, wah, wah. Do that again. <laughs> really? I mean, the did, old game show horn. Did you go to that? The, the Price is Right. The Lee Strasberg Come School on down. Actors Studio. Bob look, Barker, look, right? Look at, look at this guy. Johnny Pearson. Olsen. Johnny Olsen. Oh, my God. Look at you. Oh, you're revved up. I am. And it's only Wednesday. You know, like what Parcells used to say to us? Make sure you got your huggies on. Make sure you got your huggies on Sunday, boy, because you're going to need them. Oh, my I'm goodness. already lit like a firecracker. You, you think? <laughs> it's only Wednesday. Tell us. Tell me in a call is something that they don't know. He's Let's already go. lit like a firecracker. And he, and he doesn't go. drink caffeine, everybody. I do this not. It's all natural. I do not. No. You're, do you're, not touch it. Boy, as soon as he turns the corner and heads into the Giants area, like the parking lot area, all of a sudden, the juices get revved up. Then he walks into the building, and the juices get a little more nuts. Then it's the dining room and the locker room, and then he's here with you folks. 
Like, what's it's gonna... the love of the job, bro. Uh, uh, hey, God, let me... I, uh, folks. Secrets. God bless and amen to you. Nobody should ever. Cri- well, no one's criticizing. you. I buddy. have my dream job, one that I've dreamed about since I was five years old, and I'm doing it. And I'm covering this team for 40 years now. This is my 40th season. And if I could do 40 more, I will. And you only started covering it when you were 40. There you go. <laughs> But no. that's why that's why I'm always so excited all the time because uh, I just love what I do. Every, uh, folks, everybody should love what they do. You know, but everyone should be so lucky. You're, you're amen to that. A, 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 amen to that. But but really, it's about this week. It's about taking care of business. It's about going ahead and you know silencing the critics, whatever you want to say. But I, I I just think, again, we can say it over and over and over again. You know, this business that the Giants were worried about this and the Giants were worried about that. May, Giants would never talk. The, the playoffs, P word, nothing was said. And it's still nothing has been said except that it's fun to be playing meaningful games now in December. So the Giants are now planning a meaningful game. And quite frankly, this is, you know, you hear the old cliche from the coaches. The next game on your schedule is the most important. Well, this one is indeed the most important. This one is indeed the most meaningful for the Giants and the fans this season. Go ahead, win this game, keep destiny in your own hands, and you take care of business. Correct? You got it. All right, folks. That's it from here for the man at the controls, Pearson Butler, Paul Dottino, I'm Russ Salzberg. Thanks for being part of it. Always remember the number to call, 201 939 4513 And we will see you next week. Go Big Blue.